Hello, welcome to Tubi Life. First of all, thank you very much for coming. Today we are going to talk about gravity versus pump. Uh, but first I want to say hello to all you Tubis out there and also to any Tubi supporters. This is for you, it's a community to try and help build understanding and knowledge about the Tubi Life. I'm just here to try and spread the word, get some awareness around it. But for today, let's start looking at gravity bags versus a pump. Now we're going to have some interesting commentary here and let's, and who knows, maybe there's a surprise at the end. We'll have to wait and see. Anyway, so let's get started with gravity versus pump. Hey, listen, it's all about gravity, man. Dude, it's so groovy. It's old school. It's the way things flow. They flow naturally. You should always do natural things. But gravity, using gravity as a gravity bag, Man, it is so like now and happening and it's so boss. Anyway, well, I don't know what's wrong with that guy, but he has the wrong idea and I think he's really, really just not hip. Gravity is hip. I can prove it. See? And what I mean is that guy is just so wrong. Hey, how you doing? I'm a little, little hipster about the pump. Now the pump is the best, and I don't know what that idiot is thinking about when he's talking about gravity. The pump is the best because it takes care of everything for you. <clears throat> You don't have to worry about the drip rate, or you don't have to worry about uh, <clears throat> having to unplug at a certain time and plug by there, but eh, you don't have to worry about any of that. The pump takes care of it for you. So man, stay woke, stay hip, and I am gonna take care of that guy. He's an Whoa, 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 before we start getting too over-enthusiastic about this, let's just say we have two opinions about this, and let's see how this all plays out. There's common usage between these two, so let's start with how do you prepare a gravity bag or uh, the, the, the pump bag and they're similar, but there are a few nuances, as the Wheezy Raider would say. Check them out. It's, I put it as a link down in the comments. The Wheezy Raider would say, nuance. Anyway, let's take a look at what it takes to set up either gravity or a pump. First, we're going to look at the gravity bag. Uh, setting it up is uh, you know, pretty simple. You have to pull the bag out. You have to then <clears throat> kind of get everything ready. Make sure your clamps are closed because when you're loading this, you don't want it to just pour out into the sink or on the floor. That gets messy. But you get it ready and then you start pouring it in. This is the same no matter what, uh, either pump or gravity. And it depends upon your nutrition, how, um, you know, how you pour it in. There's different ways to do that. I might deal with that in another video. Then you hang the gravity bag. I installed this hat rack that allows me to hang the bag up on the hat rack 
And you can see here, I should monitor the drip rate when it's kind of above my eye level. I always make sure the clamps are closed. But uh, one of the main things you have to do is you always have to vent. That means just getting rid of all the air in the tube because um, there's people with different conditions that having air in the tube is just not, it's a bad thing. And for me, it just causes gas to enter into my uh, digestive system. Anyway, so venting is, <laughs> takes time. It takes a long time, or it feels such a long time. But once it's vented, I'll put it in. I'm going to show you how easy it is to do intro feeding with a pump. All you have to do is set it up and forget it. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to set it up. Just grab your bag, a uh, thousand milliliters for me because I'm a hungry guy. And you have the pump, I have the Joey um, kangaroo, it's not the e-pump, it's the standard one. A little on the heavy side, but not too bad. And I've got my nutrition. Shake well, always shake well. So first, let's get our bag out. The nice thing about this is there's no clamp anywhere. You don't have to worry about a clamp. Uh, all right, what you're seeing here is our friend loading the uh, pump bag. It's, very, it's exactly the same as if uh, you were doing a gravity bag. The difference you're going to find, though, is there's a little bit more prep at the beginning to set up the pump. And as you can see, there's videos on how to set up your pump. What I'm doing here is I'm just trying to demonstrate that when you are ready, you have to make a choice. You have to choose between bolus or intermittent or um, continuous. And continuous means always flowing. When it's on, it's always flowing. And I tend to do bolus. I, it's like a meal. I'll do three of them in a day. All right, so that's the setup between gravity and pump. And that's about it. Now, what? 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 Well, let's see what this guy has to say. I don't know what's wrong with these two guys, but the real, real best way to take a feed is using a syringe because it's the ultimate survival tool. You don't need electricity. You don't need a gravity stand. All you need is this. And you suck up your nutrition and you inject it into your tube. Bam! That's what you do. It's the ultimate survival tool. So forget what these guys are saying. Go with the syringe. All right, listen up. Here's the deal. This is all about being tough. Just when you're a tubi, you have to be strong. You have to be tough. So when you're a tubi, you sometimes have to use the survival tool, the syringe. A lot of people like to use it, but it's all about suck it up. Be tough. This is about suck it up. What you do is you get your nutrition, your formula, 
you pour it into a container. Now, you don't need a measuring cup. You need any kind of container. Could be um, half of a coconut. You know, if you're out there in the wild and you need to do this, all you need is half of a coconut. Then, you know what you do? You know what you're gonna do. You're gonna suck it up. Just like that. And then, you put it in your tube and your stomach is gonna suck it up. Just like that. So be tough, suck it up, use the syringe. That's the way to do your feeding. Take care. All right, all right, all right. We actually have three different options when it comes to enteral feeding. We have the gravity bag, we have pump, and we have the syringe. Now, it, I personally, use all three for feeding. It all depends upon what I'll be planning on doing that day. I could be planning to go on a trip somewhere. Then I tend to use the pump because the pump is very mobile. It allows you to just set it and forget it and then you just kind of go about your day. <clears throat> now, if I'm going to be working and I work from home in my, at my desk, I'm going to use the gravity bag because I can set it up and I can just allow it to drip all day. I can monitor it, monitor it very easily. So it's perfect for when you're going to be somewhat stationary. Now, the syringe I use when I have to get a lot of nutrition in a short period of time because I can, as it says, suck it up and then just inject it at any speed that I feel comfortable with. I always have to balance all of these things with um, <clears throat> the level of nausea that it causes. I tend to get nauseous during feeding, if it goes too fast. For example, if the pump is pumping at um, a rate that makes me nauseous or the gravity bag is dripping at a drip rate that makes me nauseous. Same thing with the syringe, but with the syringe, I can control it a lot better. So I can get nutrition as fast as possible with the syringe, but I also can control how fast it goes for in case I start to get nauseous. Anyway, it's not one's better than the other. It's all about what's the proper usage. And <clears throat> it all depends on the circumstances or the situation where you want to use it. So that's enough about <laughs> gravity versus pump versus syringe. It's, uh, it's really a mixed bag. For next time, we're gonna have a very interesting one because I'm gonna be traveling for the first time on an airplane with my tube. So we're gonna I mean, the next one's going to be traveling with a G-tube. So I'm interested to see what that's going to be like because uh, I have plans I'm, and I think I know what I'm going to do, but we'll see how it all comes out. And that might be interesting for some of you out there who are planning to do some traveling and you either have a tube or you're supporting somebody with a tube. And uh, I'll give you my perspective.
Uh, I hope you enjoy it. Um, stay tuned for that one. It's going to be very interesting. And until then, enjoy your to be life.